So I just want to do a quick video explaining how to get uh, a workflow going between an Arduino Uno and between Ableton Live um, using implementation of Fermata that is implemented in a programming language called Max MSP, which has a version that's inside of Ableton Live called Max for Live. And that may sound really complicated, and it kind of is, but don't worry about it. I'll, I'll work you through how to get this up and running. So the first step is to basically get Ableton Live installed on your computer. So you can just do a Google search for Ableton Live. And then, the let's see, the second result here, the first non-ad result will be Ableton's website. Ableton is the name of the company. Live is the name of their software product. They also have a hardware product that's called the Push, which is basically like a grid-based interface that's specifically designed to integrate very nicely with Live. Anyways, on the top right, you'll see a link that says Try Live for Free. And then this will give you a um, the full version of Live, a free trial for 30 days, which is fantastic. And um, I already have uh, the full version of Live installed, so I don't have to, I'm not going to install it now. Um, and Live is usually about like $750, I believe, is what it costs now. Um, they do have a very substantial educational discount, which gives you 40% off. Um, and they have a um, less robust version of the soft software, which is more in the um, $400 range. Um, but yeah, it's basically the go-to um, for interactive art that, that does a lot of audio-centric stuff, as well as for DJs and, and performance, uh, electronic music, that sort of stuff. All right, cool. And then the second thing that we're going to need is a special package for Ableton Live, um, or a pack, as they call it, uh, which is the connection kit. And um, this can be found by searching through the website here or just doing a Google search. I think that a Google search is probably going to be more fruitful. So let's do connection kit um, Ableton. Yeah. And then the first non-ad result here, connection kit Ableton, is what we want. So this is a um, it's kind of like an instrument or an effect that you can add into an Ableton channel that allows the software to then integrate with various types of hardware devices. Um, it can, um, it can, you know, talk to Lego Mindstorms. It can do JSON-based APIs, so it can talk to websites. Uh, it can integrate with little bits as well as Arduino and a bunch of other things. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download this package. I'm going to save it to my desktop here. And then it should be relatively small. I think it's uh, just a few megabytes or so. And then the way that you um, install packages in Ableton is really nice and easy. You basically just double click on the package and then it will open up Ableton. It will put all of the files where it needs to go and then you have access to it and you're all good to go. So here we have Ableton. See, it's preparing the installation of the package. First thing it does when it opens up and then, awesome, installation has been finished successfully. Fantastic. All right, cool. So then this is Ableton, and there are two different main views. There is sort of this recording view, which is more traditional to a DAW, where you have time going along the x-axis, and along the y-axis you have your different tracks or different instruments, right? And then you can record in these different tracks. What makes Ableton unique, however, is this other view, which is the default view, which is referred to as the clip view. And then the clip view will have um, basically every single kind of sound or effect that you have will be represented by these bars, by these rectangles. And then you're able to launch them in time. <laughs> And it kind of synchronizes everything. So this is what makes Ableton very popular for um, electronic music and live performances, and it'll automatically sync up the the tempo and the beat with everything, and kind of makes all this stuff really easy to do. Cool. Anyways, so 
the connection kit can be found under places, under packs. And to the left here, this is sort of the browser where you get access to all of your different effects, all the different instruments, plugins, all the all the things that you have access to in Ableton, all of Ableton's functionality. Um, all these modules are, are basically found in this left column here. In the bottom left, there is help, which will give you a little hints about what's going on. And Ableton may be kind of intimidating if um, you're not used to audio, if you've never worked with this sort of software before. Um, if that's the case, I encourage you, there's plenty of resources out there, uh, introductory video series, tutorials about how to get going with Ableton. Lynda.com has some fant fantastic ones, so does Cadenze. Um, you can even find them on YouTube through searching. So there's there's plenty of information out there. Um, but anyway, so under places, packs, we have the connection kit, which is the pack that we installed. And then our devices, we have all the different devices that the connection kit can talk to. And you can see that we also have OSC communication down here, which is very nice. So it can monitor, it can send OSC. Um, so this allows us to also read OSC in from other programs as well as send OSC out from Ableton to other programs. So we can integrate in other languages um, outside of Max MSP, outside of Max for Life. Uh, at the very top though is our Arduino object. So if we take that object and then drag it into our first track here and give it a second to initialize. Which brings up a good point is this this pack is relatively slow um, and it is prone to crashing. So it is relatively fragile in terms of <laughs> what the code can do reliably. So I definitely recommend saving your sessions as often as you can, which you can do with uh, Command S as the shortcut. Um, so I'm going to do that now as in, uh, we'll just say demo, um, what was called demo. Cool. So right down here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger if it lets me. Oh, it doesn't let me. We have our Arduino object, which um, gives us access to any Arduinos that are connected to our computer via USB. We have a tab for all the analog pins. We have a tab for the digital pins. Up here we have the different ports, so you can see as a default, it, it defaults it to my Bluetooth, which isn't an Arduino. So you have to bring down this pull down menu and then grab your actual Arduino, which there it is. And then um, one very important aspect to this workflow that I failed to mention earlier is the fact that the Arduino does have to have the standard Formata firmware installed onto it or else it won't be able to communicate with Ableton Live. So as a quick refresher, that can be um, this can be found under File, Examples, Formata, and then Standard Formata within the Arduino IDE. Now my Arduino already does have this firmware installed onto it, so I'm not going to upload it. And plus it won't work because currently Ableton is communicating with the Arduino, so it will have a, a sort of serial port mismatch issue. Um, but yeah, you just need to make sure that you do have that standard formata installed onto your Arduino Uno. And I do believe it does have to be an Uno, um, or else the system won't work. So as I said, I do have that already up and running. So we'll just kind of continue with what's going on here. And I um, on my Arduino, you can't see, but I, I do have one button that's hooked up to a digital pin 3. And I also have a potentiometer that's hooked up to analog pin 0. So, um, just for example, so we'll take digital pin 3, which is yep, this one right here, and then we can use this map button to map its functionality to something in Ableton. And this can be most buttons. Um, it's not absolutely everything, but it, but it does, um, you can do most things, right? Uh, most things that, that act as a button. So, for example, I'll, take, I'll click map here. And then we'll have it control um, the mute button on this, this channel of audio right here. So now I'm going to test it out. And if I press my button, you can both see this, this little indicator light shows up right there next to D3. And then also you can see in Ableton, it's grayed out, but you can see that it kind of goes from light gray to dark gray. Now if Ableton is playing, and then if I press this button, you can see they'll trigger our <laughs> our track there, right? Cool. Now, let's go to analog. And then let's map our potentiometer to something. 
So it's the same sort of idea where we can click this map button and then we can click on a um, any parameter in Ableton here that is ver that is variable uh, variable <laughs> sorry that um, is continuous right that's not just a digital input it's not just a button so for example I'll map it to um, the amplitude of this signal here the track volume of track four and then let's play it again and see what we get all right so I have my button there and you can see the potentiometer controls the amplitude of this drum track. Cool. So then there's a few other things that it gives us. So for the analog, it gives us min and max, meaning it's sort of like um, the remap function and processing, where we can tell it that we want 20% as the lowest amount that we can get out of this. And we want, for instance, 80% uh, as the highest amount. So now if I play it again, I have my potentiometer other way completely to the left, and it's only down it to 20% of the signal. Other way to the right, it goes up to 80%. It doesn't do the entire range. So we can use this to limit the controls. The other thing that we have is the curve, which has to do with kind of transferring the continuous um, linear signal into a log logarithmic or exponential one, which you don't really have to worry about for most applications, but it, it has to do with um, whether it's it's treating it as kind of an amplitude or whether it's, it's treating it more as a linear value. All right, so that's kind of pretty much the basics um, in terms of how to get your Arduino to communicate with Ableton using this Vermont framework. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Please let me know if you have any more questions and I'll do my best to help you out. All right, awesome.